Hello again. In this video segment, we will have a brief demonstration of loading sequence planning as a continuation series of part 3 in bulk carrier ship discussions. This video is brought to you and sponsored by Polaris Center. Check the description below for further details on how to enroll. So let's proceed. The loading sequence arrangement must be carefully planned in advance by the chief officer, taking into account and all related data and information such as the loading terminal configurations, loading rate, ship stability, and the ballasting rate etc. Let me lay out the importance of load plan. First, the load plan has to be fully understood by the junior officers, and likewise, it has been approved by the master. Also, the loading plan should be shared to the terminal. The arrangement of loading sequence is a significant record. This would give all those involved an overview of expected conditions and mitigate situations that may bring the vessel into unwanted and negative events or situation, especially with safety of vessel, its cargo, crew, and likewise the terminal side. This is an example of loading plan form. As an example demonstrations, I will show you how it is being done. The form may vary in different ships and their company, but in general they are basically the same and goes into the same directions or the contents likewise. As you can see here, it is subdivided or tabulated. Basically, it's a data of information arranged in a way that the duty officer should be confident enough to follow. Nevertheless, if in doubts and such plan may always be brought up to the chief officer's attention. Right, so now uh, I'm showing you an example of a loading plan. So this is not uh, different to any other plans that you might find on board bulk carriers. It's almost basically the same. It's probably a little bit uh, uh, the, the data might be uh, uh, in different uh, columns or uh, rows, but it's basically uh, showing the same or exact uh, directions of a loading plan for any bulk carriers, regardless of what type of bulk carriers you have. It's either you have a handy size, a cap size, or a um, Panama size type of vessel, so it doesn't matter. So in here, we have a loading uh, port uh, name, discharging port, and we have the name of the vessel, and of course the cargo or cargos, and of course if you are carrying only one or loading more than one. Also the date you'll find here, the voyage number, the port water density last cargo and of course the last two items here on the right you'll find here it's quite important the number of loaders so in this example we have one loader and in some cases if you are in other ports you might find that there are two loaders and sometimes they can load uh, the ship uh, simult the ship simultaneously and here we have also the loading or uh, discharge rate and in which case we have a loading rate which is about in this example it's about 2800 tons per hour now in the first uh, left frame or few columns of this uh, form, you'll find here the sequence number. So in this example, it's number 1, 2, 18. And then you have the location and of course the tons entry or weight. Then we have the ballast operation. So in here it's quite important that uh, the ballast uh, and the tons that has to be pumped out in concurrence to the uh, loading uh, operation must be uh, placed in that uh, kind in, in that row so that you will be able to follow at the same time, assess and monitor the uh, condition of the vessel. Now, at the same time, you have to understand the required time. The required time goes on hand and in parallel with the loading rate and the pumping capacity of your pumps or your ballast pumps. So, meaning to say, if you are loading, it's uh, common sense that there should be also a uh, deballasting. And, of course, in the rule of the thumb, when you are uh, loading, say, for example, in uh, cargo hold number one, the most closest scenario is that you will be discharging or deballasting close to that uh, frame of that cargo holds. So uh, basically, it's a cargo hold number one. In most cases, you will be deballasting somewhere in the port peak or one center or double bottom and one port and one starboard or number two port and starboard ballast tanks. And of course, it depends on the stability dynamics that uh, will be uh, given or shown into the loadicator. Of course, this will be uh, predetermined by the chief officer. So as you can see here, there are expected drops calculated. So in here, for example, uh, which I'll, I will be showing you in the loadicator. So for example, we have here a 6.5 uh, forward meter uh, draft and about 6.8 uh, draft uh, aft. And you'll find there that there is the trim and the midship drop. So now uh, this is quite a bit hassle for the duty officer because they have to check it from time to time, the observed drops. The observed drops will be able to uh, verify if the loading plan as uh, preferred by the chief officer is going as planned. So, for example, if the observed uh, drops through visual 
or through online uh, checking is a little bit different from the calculated draft then uh, of course you might uh, raise a question and then uh, there might be some doubts so in this case the chief officer or should be notified immediately if uh, found or some values doesn't uh, go in parallel or there are some sort of discrepancies with regards to the expected uh, values that is stated in the plan now the airdrops actually uh, we are talking talking about the airdrops not the airdrops from keel to the highest point of the vessel we are talking about the airdrops for the uh, hold area because uh, there will be some there are ports wherein we have airdrops restriction uh, due to the load, load loaders and of course at the same time if, if you have a drop restriction and that would be a little bit uh, uh, challenging for the vessel so that is the airdrops now we have also on the last two columns the stability dynamics which is the bending moments and shear forces so in here you'll be able to determine also the present condition of the vessel with regards to its, its stresses now this is quite important now you have to remi be reminded as well that we have a maximum uh, allowable or uh, limits for our uh, stability dynamics with regards to bending moment and shear forces and there is a company policy for that so you have to check it with your uh, data on hand and information given to you by the uh, chief officer so as you can see we have here also the comments area and at the same time uh, you'll find here at the bottom is the uh, area wherein it was signed by the chief officer or the master or representative of the vessel and the representative of the ship terminal so likewise uh, uh, you might as well find here the uh, area wherein the uh, officer and once or duty officer uh, might also have uh, their signature in place so that uh, it is quite understood that the uh, uh, responsible officer uh, having their duties when uh, or during the loading is uh, important that they have understand the plan so with no much further ado i'll show you the loadigator how you will be able to uh, uh, put in the values here and at the same time all the airdrops and bending moment and where to find it so that you will be able to create a loading plan that is uh, uh, that will be followed uh, accordingly uh, as we do the loading operation okay uh, let's proceed uh, we put in first the uh, weight uh, so for example uh, the uh, cargo hold number one it's about 4 to 6 uh, tons and cargo number two is about uh, 6.5 this is an example and number 6 by 4 to cargo number 3 cargo number 4 is uh, 6 4 3 6 and number 5 is uh, 5 8 1 0 so basically it, that is uh, in sequence to the uh, previous section on part 2 so we have a total of 2 9 2 8 1 now uh, we all know to the fact also that we have a 20 cubic uh, feet uh, per metric tons of uh, storage factor uh, assume or given and uh, we have the restriction on the port which is about 12.8 uh, just for uh, example maximum air draft for example is uh, we have about uh, let's say uh, 10 meters so 10, uh, and departure drop so now we'll put it like so maybe 15 and departure drop is uh, 9.8 meters okay and we have the rate per uh, uh, hour for the loading now uh, it's a rule of the thumb or common uh, sense dictates uh, depends on the uh, condition and uh, stability of the ships in most cases we start loading in the middle part of the holds like if we have five holds then we start on cargo hold number three and uh, in most cases we start with uh, say half of the amount that is to be loaded so let's say put, we'll put in 2500 and of course uh, we can start the ballasting on say uh, one port and uh, one starboard uh, one starboard uh, ballast tanks so there you go all right so let's say for example the required time is about uh, uh, two hours three hours it's just an approximation okay things like that so now uh, let's say uh, we are expecting uh, a draft uh, in this calculation we will be utilizing the so-called uh, lodicator so uh, i'll show you so this is the uh, lodicator as of now as you can see uh, we go to cargo holds and uh, we put in uh, the uh, say a uh, number hold number three that's hold number three and uh, let's put in 2500 and so we enter that so as you can see in the middle we have a little bit and uh, of course i'll make sure that uh, on your stability we have the uh, on the left right uh, uh, pane of this uh, indicator you'll find here sg which is sea going we change that to uh, harbor let me see harbor and we will be able to determine the stresses for the harbor 
can be shot. And also we have to make sure on the miscellaneous that uh, the density of course is uh, say 1.0 to 0 and we are in some draft so there and there you go so now uh, if you look at the uh, this area you'll be able to see the tree trim here so let me just uh, put in the magnifier so we can see it so as you can see there's the trim so hold on a minute it's about 7.26 and uh, for half is uh, forward is 5.19 and the trim is 2.06 so there you go we have 55 and uh, uh, about 47 percent for frame uh, 46 so we will take that 7.26 and 6.22 uh, i mean uh, 5.19 and we go back to our uh, here and we put in uh, 7.26 and 5.19 and you'll see that the trim 47 percent and your process is 55 that's in a uh, percentage uh, fully so right so as you can see uh, you just have to play uh, with this uh, lodicator so that you'll be able to see if you are uh, in the right uh, condition say if you check your stability analysis you'll be able to see here your hydrostatic information and you can see there all the data that um, has to be or i mean the analysis of data and you can also look at the uh, diagram in this case so you'll be able to see here uh, here uh, you'll see here the uh, red uh, line is the bending moments and the blue line is the shear forces we'll have another discussion for this dynamic stability with regards to your stresses but as you can see as we do the uh, uh, plan you'll be able to find out uh, what's going on with your ship so if we load again and uh, say let's say on the sequence uh, uh, next sequences say let's say we go to one and uh, we put also some into two and in number four hold and number five and then considerably we put in uh, some amounts uh, depending on what has been agreed with the uh, terminal so we we just have to put some amounts in there so as you can see here uh, procedure one loading some cargo for its hold so that uh, you can put some values here from the loadicator and you'll be able to complete in here while well, this area and of course you can check also you can uh, we can go here and check the so-called uh, uh, holds uh, permissible and uh, like this one this is these are the maximum per permissible limits for the cargo for its cargo holds and also we can uh, check the uh, so-called uh, airdrops is the airdrop there you go so in here you'll see that the airdrops and say let's say uh, uh huts number three is about 9.66 and huts number one is about 10.31 so let's just put in here about 9.66 okay so that's the airdrop so again uh, you go back with the uh, loading uh, sequence plan and you fill in the values here that uh, correspond with the uh, required uh, uh, stability of your vessel so until you'll be able to uh, complete the loading plan and in here we put in uh, the so-called uh, other procedure like say for example there you go procedure 2 is finishing and hold 135 retaining allowance for 1 and 5 for final loading and say trimming and of course uh, the rest of the uh, procedure will be in this area so again uh, this is not uh, uh, like a, a standard thing depends on the condition situation and arrangement that you have with the uh, uh, loading uh, terminal and at the same time the conditions configurations of the force including all the factors that I have mentioned earlier so it's not uh, exact uh, planning that you will have to follow this is just an explanation or demonstration on how to do the planning so uh, i do not need to go through all the details uh, because it's uh, like i mentioned earlier it's quite different from one ship to the other but if you would like to experience the in-depth knowledge and uh, more thorough uh, explanation expounded and uh, explained then uh, it will be uh, advisable to attend a tremendous stability course and hand on hand you will be able to simulate the different scenarios 
and uh, given a uh, kind of uh, voyage order in different uh, conditions and situations, load line zones to another and also different uh, uh, cargoes, uh, rate, uh, cargo grades, likewise restrictions and all the uh, factors that is required. So if you have all these information then you'll be able to simulate them accordingly. So again, uh, just put the comments and uh, scrutinize as well the uh, lectures. And this is the end of the part 3 discussion. Thank you.